Hey guys, it's Steph, the Midwest Cowgirl, and today we're trotting a horse. Hey everybody, today is the final lesson for the Riding Lessons for Beginners series. You've learned how to walk, you've learned how to stop, you've learned how to back up, and you've learned how to turn your horse. So today's a big one. We're gonna learn how to trot your horse. For a traditional four-gated horse, you've got the walk, trot, the canter, and the gallop. So first we did the walk, and now we're gonna go into the trot. It's a different rhythm, so the walk is a one, two, three, four beat, and the trot is a one, two, one, two, one, two. A canter is one, two, three, one, two, three. And a gallop is one, because all the feet hit at once and come off at once. So the trot is a little bit different rhythm where you have to really relax your body and control it. So a lot of it has to do with your hips and your core. And you got to keep your arms still because your body's going to want to bounce, but your hands got to stay still. So we're going to go over that. And a lot of people will start to lean forward in the saddle and grip. We're not going to want to do that either because you don't want your horse to go faster. And we'll also go over on how to control the speed in your horse's trot because sometimes some horses will stay the same speed and I like to call it their cruise control is broken. So if their cruise control is broken, they may start out fine and then they may speed up and then you got to slow them back down. So we'll go over that. How you're first going to want to get your horse to trot is you're gonna wanna start with your legs. You're gonna slowly start to squeeze with your legs and you're gonna start with your calves and work down to your heels. Every horse is different. So Honey, for example, is pretty sensitive. It doesn't take a lot for me to ask her to go. So I just gently squeeze her with my heels. Sometimes all it takes is my calf to get her to go. If that doesn't work, then you come in with some light tapping of your legs and you can get a little bit louder and quicker. And then if your legs are not getting the job done, if you've got your handy dandy Makati reins and you've got this extra string here, you use it as a tool to get your horse to go to gently swing back towards their butt to ask them to go. You never wanna haul off and wail on them because you could go for a bronc ride at that point. So you wanna just feel your horse out. Sometimes it takes less and sometimes it takes more. I always have the motto of do less before you have to do more and see how little it takes to get your horse to go. And I'm not asking you to kick your horse. I'm just saying that if your horse is not going from a squeeze, you gently start with a tap and then you work into a louder rhythm of a tap and you don't want to haul off and nail them because that's when you come in with this because you can do less with that. Next, I'm gonna talk about your hips, the, your seat, and your core, so your balance. With trotting, it's a different rhythm, so when you're walking, you're kind of just hips forward, and in a way, it's kind of similar, but it's faster and sped up. When you're trotting, you really wanna relax your hips and relax and control your core. You don't wanna be a stiff forward because when that happens, you're gonna slam on their back, and that's gonna make their back sore. And, and essentially, when you are stiff and bouncing, the horse is actually gonna go faster because they're trying to find that rhythm and stay with you. The softer you are and more loose and controlled and soft you are, the slower your horse is gonna go because it's gonna feel good to them. Next, I'm gonna go over your hands and why it's so important. And this is a big one. When you're trotting along, you wanna be able to have your arms next to your rib cage. I always tell my students, you gotta glue them there because when they're here, your back muscles are softened. So you wanna be able to have them here and you can control them better here so they're not bouncing around and jiggling the bit in their mouth. Here, your hands will go with you more and be softer and still. And that's super important to your horse because they don't want the, the bit jiggling in their mouth and hitting their teeth all over the place. It's uncomfortable for them. All right, now we're gonna see it in action. Watch my body, my hands, my legs. I'm gonna gently squeeze her. Doesn't take much. My hips are relaxed. I'm going forward with her. My legs are relaxed. My arms are bent. If I feel her go too fast, I just bend them a little bit more and sit a little deeper on my seat.
My hands aren't moving. They're still. It essentially could be something like this. They're not moving. And that's the gist of it. You guys are gonna be pros before you know it at the track. Something that's really important that I think should be addressed is, especially when you're a beginner, your horse may not stay the same speed in the trot. They may go faster because as a beginner, you may be a little bit more tight and the horse is gonna to wanna to speed up. And it's gonna be hard to juggle both because you want to stay relaxed and loose and controlled, but you also need to be able to slow your horse down in the trot. The maneuver to shorten your reins is the same as stopping. You just don't want to apply the same amount of pressure when you stop your horse. So you get here and you just sit deep on your butt. You can already see honey starting to respond. Some horses may actually slow down with just getting to this point. And if that's the case, give them the slack. It may be a, a shorten your reins and release. Shorten your reins and release because you don't want to keep them tight and ride them on a tight rein because then your horse will never learn how to trot on a loose rein and that is the goal. All right, I'm gonna go into some of the don'ts you wanna do with your horse when you trot. When you first ask your horse to trot, you're squeezing and it's super important to let go as soon as they go. You don't wanna continue the squeeze because squeezing means go. So if you're asking your horse to trot and you're continuing to squeeze and stay tight, they're just gonna keep going. They may go into a canter, I don't know. So it's really important to just release the pressure as soon as they go into the trot. Next, I'm gonna go into your seat. You're gonna wanna stay deep because I will see people do this in the trot. As soon as they go into the trot, they're like, oh man, it's faster, it's a quicker rhythm. So they naturally, your natural reaction is to tighten up when something you know, you're uncomfortable and unfamiliar with. So you really wanna fight that. I see people do this. They lean forward and that causes you to grip with your legs and the horses can feel that. They can feel any sort of shift and change in the saddle. So if you lean forward and they feel you gripping with your thighs, they're gonna think I gotta keep going faster. So you gotta sit deep. Next, I see people when they first go into a trot is they do this. They point their toes. That's actually gonna throw you off balance. That tightens your quad muscle and that pulls you forward naturally. So it's really important to keep your heels down because that pulls the hamstring muscle in your leg and that pulls you down into the saddle. So this pulls this muscle, this is a no, and this is a yes. This pulls this muscle to come down and sit deep on your butt. Next, I'm gonna go into your back and your hands. You don't wanna ride like this in a trot. That causes tightness and a brace in your back. You wanna have your elbows bent and soft and it creates softness in your back and it allows your back to be uh, more limber and soft to go with the horse versus tight. Thanks so much for watching you guys. You've now completed the five video series for beginners. Stay tuned for the next series. I'm gonna be focusing more on intermediate riding. I appreciate all the support. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next series.